Hey, welcome to another grand episode of On Top and Hot. I'm your host, John Zadar, and this is August 22nd. It is Tuesday. Now, if you were with me yesterday, I gave you a heads up that I had a hot penny stock for you today that I was truly excited about. Now, we look at hot penny stocks all the time. Stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Now, I normally determine a stock having heat by looking at the charts first. I find a chart that has volume coming in or has a breakout setup, something that says I'm ready to run. Then I go looking through the press releases and the filings trying to find a catalyst, and I classify that as a hot penny stock. Well, that's not the case this time. I'm going to be right up front and tell you the chart is cold. What it is, though, it's a buying opportunity. Folks, she is at like three-year lows right now, and the company is hot. They are building this company up from the ground up the right way. They are building themselves for long-term growth and profitability. Cavo, she is involved with the e-cigarette vape industry, and this has been exploding for a while. It started exploding when COVID started exploding. And that's where the problem arose. There wasn't enough people in time to give this sector the attention it needed. So we don't have laws on the books the way we should. And the whole sector just kind of went awry. Now, it is an exploding sector. Think about this. We've had cigarettes for well over 100 years and there's been no options. If somebody wanted to quit cigarettes, they had to tough it out. Then we got the patch. You know, you could suck it up through your skin, which would trickle into your body. We got lozenges. We got gum. I've tried all those. They are not the same. When you inhale your nicotine, you feel it in 30 to 90 seconds. You put a patch on, good luck feeling it. And it's not the same feeling. So it is foreign. It doesn't make me feel comfortable. Vapes are as close to cigarettes as we've got. You still inhale, you still exhale, and you're getting your nicotine, minus all the carcinogens, the cancer-causing agents, the 4,000 chemicals they put in cigarettes to make them burn evenly, to smell right, all that crazy stuff. Now you're just getting the nicotine. Now, nicotine doesn't kill anybody. You can OD on it, that's why it's a, a controlled substance, but use it properly, nobody gets hurt from nicotine. Now, I think the company has got everything going on for themselves right now. They have done everything the government wants, and that's the key ingredient here. They have to kowtow to the government if they want to be in this game, and the government is going to do all the heavy lifting to make this company successful. The company's got a great product. They have got a plan. Let me share some of this information with you. Cavo, she finished the day at 44 cents and she dropped a little more today, just about 3%. She is on the NASDAQ, so you can trade her for free. You can trade her pre-market. You can trade her after market. I've told you what this company does, but I want to show you how she got started. And it all started a while ago. So the first piece of news that put the company on the track it's currently on came out a long time ago, March of 2020. They tell us here that the company entered into an exclusive distribution agreement with Biddy Vapor LLC, to which Biddy granted the company an exclusive worldwide right to distribute the electronic nicotine delivery system, also known as ENDS, e -N -D -S, and related components. So, BD has made an exclusive deal with this company, meaning nobody else is going to get the right to sell the BD stick or any of their other products in the entire world. The other piece of news just came out here recently, May 31st. The company announced it has acquired an extensive patent portfolio from GoFire Inc. with the goal of diversifying its product offerings and creating near and longer term revenue opportunities. The acquisition from GoFire includes 12 issued and 46 pending patents across multiple jurisdictions with technology covering e-cigarettes, cannabis and hemp, and pharmaceutical applications as well. Now, I got more information I want to give you here because we're going to build on this. They have got their three subsidiaries they're working with right now. The main business is Cabo Brands. They're located in Florida. They tell us that Cavo Brands is a company focused on incubating innovative and profitable adult-focused products into mature, dominant brands. 
with a current focus on the distribution of the electronic nicotine delivery systems, better known as ENDS, also known as e-cigarettes, also known as vape units. Our business plan is to seek to diversify into distributing other nicotine and non-nicotine delivering system products, including CBDs. The company has made a deal with Philip Morris, the huge tobacco company. Together, they have the exclusive global distributor rights for all products manufactured by BD Vapor. And we'll get more into that deal here in a minute. Looking at Cavo Labs. Cavo Labs is also in Florida. This is a 100% wholly owned subsidiary of Cavo Brands. They are focused on developing new branded and white label products and services in the vaporizer and inhalation technology sector. Now, white labeling is big money and it's easy business. You take your product and you rub your name off of it and you put somebody else's name on it and you sell the products to them and they sell them as their own products. Happens all the time. Amazon is filled with white label products. They go on to tell us about those 12 existing and 46 pending patents for novel technologies across extrusion dose control, product preservation, tracking and tracing usage, multiple modalities, and child safety, which we are going to talk about that. It's very important. The patents and patent applications cover territories including the United States, Australia, Canada, and China, the European Patent Organization, Israel, Japan, Mexico, New Zealand, and South Korea. The portfolio also includes a fully functional proprietary mobile device software application that is used in conjunction with certain patents in the portfolio. Now, I don't know if this company is using it or not, but I was following the vape industry a while ago, back when it was starting up with uh, the cannabis industry. And they had come up with an app that you could attach to your vaporizer and it would recognize the borders of the states. Some states didn't allow vaping. And if you crossed the border, your vape would not work because your app would recognize you were in a territory it wasn't legal. So you just couldn't get it to work. They also had technology so only one user could use that vape. You could actually sign into the vape, if you will, so that it's on for you. Or they actually had a fingerprint. Somebody had come up with a little fingerprint that you put on it and your fingerprint or thumbprint had to be on it for it to actually work. Now, I don't know if they're using any of that technology, but it is available to be used. Other companies have been using it. And about BD Vapor. They too are based in Florida. BD Vapor maintains a commitment to the responsible, adult-focused marketing, supporting age verification standards and sustainability through BD Care's recycling program. BD Vapor's premier device, the BD Stick, is a premium product made with high quality components. Now, what I really like about this company is that they are walking the line that the government has drawn, and they're walking it very, very well. There was a deadline for all of these ENDS companies to meet. They had to get in a PM, a PTMA, I believe it is, pre-market tobacco application. PMTA. They had to get that in in a certain amount of time and they weren't given a lot of time and they had to submit a lot of information. Well, a lot of companies did not make it in time. A lot of companies did not provide enough information. Well, this company went way overboard. They weren't just on time. They submitted something like 275,000 pages of science to back themselves up. So let's take a look at this so that you can get an idea of what's going on because folks, this is the most important thing. You have got to prove yourself to the government if you want to be in the game. And this company is doing everything. They have done all the research, they have made all the submissions, and they are responding to the public outcries which the government can't ignore. That is underage usage and the waste of these disposable units. There needs to be some recycling. So I've jumped over here. This gives us a little information about these PMTAs, pre-market tobacco applications. The products that require PMTAs include cigars, pipe tobacco, electronic cigarettes, vape units, hookah tobacco, and modern oral products. There were two deadlines for filing PMTAs with the agency. 
for products made or derived from tobacco itself or tobacco derived nicotine products the fda submission deadline was september 9th 2020. products with nicotine made or derived from a source other than tobacco itself for example synthetic nicotine the pmtas were required to be submitted by may 14th 2022. Now check this out. This is where it starts to get nice for us. The agency, the FDA, received over 8 million applications, the PMTAs, which have nicotine derived from the tobacco leaf itself. The mass majority of these were electronic nicotine or vapor products. Specifically, the agency received over 8 million PMTAs for e-cigarettes and vapor products. However, are you ready for this? The FDA has refused to allow or denied marketing authorization for 7.7 million of those. Out of the over 8 million, 7.7 million are out of the game, leaving 267,000 e-cigarette and nicotine vapor products still pending. These remaining PMTAs include applications from Juul, Views, Enjoy, Logic, Blue, Smoke, and Puff Bar, just to name a few. As a matter of fact, they tell us the FDA has also issued orders authorizing the sale of 23 electronic cigarette devices and nicotine e-liquids sold by R.J. Reynolds Vapor Company, Enjoy, and Logic. However, of the 23 products authorized, the only flavor allowed is tobacco nothing else and this company's got 11 flavors a while ago actually it had to do with thc a chinese company sent over vapes of thc and they were made with vitamin e normally you use glucose and thc or glucose and nicotine that's what the rest of the juice is well they used vitamin e and it caused detriment to the lungs well as soon as that happened the vape market took a beating even though it was only thc and one company that wasn't being monitored that did this all of the vape companies took a beating jewel took the hardest as if they had anything to do with it well at that point in time the government said that's it no more flavors what has flavors got to do with it nothing as a matter of fact, this company has been going to court over and over again, fighting to get their flavors on the market, saying there is no difference between tobacco flavor and these flavors. There's no health disadvantage involved. And they are making progress right now. Nobody has authorization to do flavors, but this company is actually fighting. And the circuit courts are now supporting their battle so they could get there real soon. The new law passed by Congress provides that a product with synthetic nicotine can remain on the market if the FDA issued a marketing granted order, an MGO. The FDA to this date has not issued any MGOs for products that contain synthetic nicotine. And we know of a couple companies on the OTC market that are selling synthetic nicotine. It's fake. It's a different type of nicotine that you still feel the buzz from, but you don't get addicted to. Now, the next piece of news I want to share with you here has to do with where they're going to get their money, folks. The company has a solid foundation by getting this this PMTA submitted on time and with a lot of information. Now, they don't really have to worry about their competitors. Truth of the matter is, they don't have a very big market share, but they're doing more dollar revenue than everybody else. But you see all of this gold right here? You know what that is? Black market. This is illegal business with the e-cigarette market right there. They tell us down here that 81.7% of the disposable e-cigarette market is controlled by non-compliant players. This represents a massive opportunity for Biddy Vapor to capture additional market share without having to worry about the competition. We don't have to try to steal the pennies they've got. There is loads of money right here, but we don't have to do the fighting. They tell us here that to capture that additional market share, all they have to do is wait for the FDA to continue to pull products off the market. And as states begin their own enforcement efforts, it's going to become 
tighter and tighter and tighter. And that's been the problem, folks. They dropped the ball during COVID, didn't make a lot of regulations when the market was exploding. And a lot of illegal products came over here from the Pacific Asian area, China, and we're smoking them. There is nobody investigating validating or inspecting these products and we are smoking them and almost every little gas station and little store around me has these products and most of them are illegal so as long as the government continues to make progress in this sector which they've got to do for health reasons this company is going to grow they have a dominant product, they have a dominant market, and you're gonna see that they have a responsible approach to how they're doing their marketing. Let's take a look at that now. Now, one of the most pressing issues, not only in the government and the public side, but also the company's eye, is underage usage. Since these cigarettes and vapes came on the market, way too many children are getting these units in their hands. And honestly, the biggest contributing factor to this problem is the reckless behavior of store operators. These are the people buying the illegal units to sell in their stores to make a profit. Do you really think they care who they're selling their units to? Probably not. Now, this company is aware of that problem, so they are primarily working only with big chain stores. If they find any store that is not age verifying, they're going to just pull their products and never sell them to them again. Now, right now, you cannot buy any cigarettes, e-cigarettes, vape units, or anything like that online because ultimately, we can't guarantee they're going to end up in an adult's hands. Well, this company has figured out a way to age verify online. When you get to their site, the first thing you're going to do is type in your birthday. Well, obviously, that doesn't prove anything. You could type anything in you want. So you're going to give them the rest of your information, and they're going to take all that data, and they're going to compare it to all the public data that is out there, kind of like a people search, and they'll verify if you are who you say you are. But still, that's not good enough. Next thing they're going to do is ask you for a picture ID, and they have an intelligent matching technology to verify if that is a real ID or not. But we're not done yet. In the next 24 hours, you'll receive a phone call verifying that you, the adult, placed the order. And then finally, believe it or not, when it comes to your door, you've actually got to sign for it. When was the last time we had to sign for anything? And you've got to show your ID to make sure you are the person. So they've got that all figured out. I would like to buy stuff offline. I've tried. They actually offer it. But when I put in my order, they say they can't mail it because of the laws in the states. Well, why did you even offer it in the first place? So I would really like to see this. Now, the second thing they're working on is also a public cry. That is recycling. These are disposable units. Think of how many of these could end up in the landfill. We don't want them there. So let me show you what they're doing. The recycling of these disposable units is a serious issue. The government knows it. The public knows it. There are chemicals. There are toxic metals in these units. We have to recycle them. It's not like cigarettes where you can just throw your butt out the window and have it land in the ditch. You can't throw them into the garbage and have them go to the landfill. That is unacceptable disposal. These have to be recycled. Now, in my opinion, sooner or later, the government's going to get on board and they're going to order. They're going to force all of these companies to recycle their products, whether they want to or not, which puts this company way ahead of the game. They've already got a system in place for recycling their BD sticks, and they've got a website dedicated to it. This is BDCares.com. Now, I know I don't have to read this to you, but let's call it a disclaimer. The improper disposal of electronic waste is a problem that requires multiple solutions. Electronic equipment contains toxic contaminants that cause water and air pollution and are of particular concern when disposed of in landfills. Exposure to toxic metals found in these wastes can cause serious health problems. To help lessen the growing e-waste problem, BD Vapor initiated the BD Cares program to offer adults ways to recycle their used BD sticks. And not for nothing, they have given us an incentive to do this. Now, these are their di directions, their instructions, real simple. Basically, they tell you that you can't send any more than 20 at a time. That is the maximum. They're going to give you the free boxes, so to speak, 
run on over to the post office. You're going to grab up their free priority mail, small flat rate box size, roughly eight by five by one and toss your BD sticks in there. Then you're going to come to this website right here. You're going to tell them how many BD sticks you're sending them. And then you're going to print off the postage that they paid for. Doesn't cost you anything to mail them back and get this for every 10 you recycle. They'll give you a coupon to get one free BD stick recycle 20. You've got two free BD sticks. You gotta love that folks. Now, before we go look at some information about the stock, now there is more I want to share with you, but it's going to come from the news. I want to talk to you about this BD stick. Now they've got two primary products right now, the BD stick that you're looking at here and the pouches that go into your mouth. I particularly don't care for the pouches. Not that I've tried theirs, but I have tried pouches. Woohoo! Them bad boys burn. I couldn't keep it in my mouth for more than eight, 10 seconds at the most. And boy, did I get enough nicotine. My head was swimming. But looking at the BD stick, theirs is very well made. Now I said earlier, I have tried a lot of these vapes. I have tried Juul, Views, Enjoy, Blue. I've tried them all. Most of them are 2.5% nicotine up to 5% nicotine. This one is strong. It is a 6% nicotine, which honestly may be too strong for me. You hit it too many times, you just get a little bit nauseous. So you've got to learn not to use it as a pacifier. Hit it and put it down. But what I really like about this one, better than any other vape unit out there that I know of, they have found a way to separate the juice from the heating coil. As it stands right now, you got a pool of your oil and the heating coil is in the middle. Well, when it heats up, whatever is laid up against that heating coil is vaporized and you inhale, but all the fluid is being heated up over and over again. Well, this stick has found a way to separate your hit. It pulls it away from all the rest of the juice and just heats up what you're going to inhale, leaving all the rest of it alone. They have expiration dates on these. They say they're good for 22 months and the battery is, you know, official. They're not cheap batteries like we're getting out of China. So the stick seems to be better to me, though I have not tried it yet. I am looking for it, but they're not here in the Midwest yet. Maybe I can prove my age on site and buy one, right? <laughs> All right, let's go take a look at some stock information. And when we get to the news, you're going to see how they are expanding into a lot of business right now, getting their products out there. We've come back to the OTC markets to get the rest of this stock information. We're going to take a look at Cavo's relative volume first. Over the last 30 days, she's been under the radar. She's been doing about 77,000 shares a day. Today, she dropped a little bit more down to just over 74,000 shares. Looking at the share structure for Cavo, outstanding share count is accurate. It is just over 58 million, but the rest of these numbers are not correct. You should be able to add up the unrestricted shares, which is our float, and the restricted shares, which is the amount of shares that the insiders, the management own. Those two numbers together should add up to the outstanding share count. Well, there's no way that 12 and 19 equals 58. So I did some diving around. Turns out that the insiders own 44 million shares. That is about 75%. We get the other 25%. That leaves us about 14 million. So we've got a decent float here. Looking at the financials. In 2020 and 2021, the company had a dynamite year. Their revenues were 58 million and 64 million dollars. Now we know it's millions because they tell us up here, we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here. Then we had a big drop at the end of 2022 down to 12.7 million. Well, that got me curious. So I jumped around their financials, trying to see what I could learn. And I discovered that the company pulled their products off the market two or three times voluntarily, not because of anything they did. I think it was more self-preservation. I think they were getting out of the way of flying debris in the storm. I told you that the vape sector had gone awry. There was a lot of stuff happening and maybe it was just smarter to sit on the sidelines. Looking at her quarterly, ah, she's doing roughly 3 million every quarter. And the last quarter was not that great. But right now, 
we're going to see in the news, she is cutting some huge deals. So I don't expect the revenues to stay small for very long. Now, real quick, let's take a look at that balance sheet. That always tells us the tale. Cash in the bank. They have got $3.6 million. We know it's millions, right? We got to add those three zeros here too. Total assets, 12 and a half million. And total liabilities is only down at 2.6 million. So their assets are strong, their revenues are consistent, and as far as I'm concerned, they are about to change in a very big way. Looking at the disclosures for the company, we've got two 8Ks here that are pretty recent. The top one is about the news I'm going to share with you. Uh, this other 8K is about a note that they are taking care of. And then you got a couple of Form 4s. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. Now, they can get them in a lot of different ways. We're primarily concerned when they buy them or sell them, and that's not the case here. So let's jump on into that news now. Now, the news you're looking at right here, it's old. It's real old. This is 2021, but I do want to give you a feel for what they've been doing. First off, back here, Cabo Brands issued statement prioritizing compliance with the Tobacco Control Act and PACT Act. So everything was on base even back then. The company announces plans to launch Cavo brand hemp CBD product line. BD Vapor secures intellectual property protections in China. And it was on July 29th, 2021 that the ticker KAVL went live on the charts. Now looking at the current news, we are looking back here to June 9th. Cabo Brand looks to address key market opportunities following acquisition of extensive vaporizer and inhalation patent portfolio. And I showed you that, the 12 patents and the 46 pending. They've got that going on. Now, we start getting into some deals here, folks. Cabo Brands relaunches distribution. Relaunches because they took it off the market for a while. Their biddy sticks in over 1,000 Circle K locations. And here in the 15th of June, Cabo Brands launches distribution of Biddy Stick over 900 Quick Trip Mapco locations. The fact of the matter is they got deals with a lot of companies and most of them are chain stores, franchise stores, not just ma and pa operations. Now the one piece of news we have to take serious consideration for is the one that came out August 2nd. NASDAQ grants Cabo Brands 180-day extension to regain compliance. Their price, folks, it's underneath a dollar. It was underneath a dollar for too long. If they don't get that price up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days, they'll be yanked off of the NASDAQ and thrown down to the OTC. And that isn't going to help anybody. So they have a final date. I do believe it is uh, January 14th, I think it is, of 2024. They've got up until then to get the price up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. And that uh, other couple of pieces of news, the company appointed a new chief executive officer and chief financial officer. Changing management is a big deal. And I'm sure they did this for all the right reasons. And then, that piece of news I brought up at the very beginning, let's take a look at now. Cavo Brands amends agreement with Philip Morris International for distribution of ENDS products. This news press came out August 17th. The company has amended its agreement with Philip Morris Product, a wholly owned affiliate of Philip Morris International. Yes, the huge tobacco company for the development and distribution of ENDS products in markets outside of the USA. Now think about that. You're talking about a company that's been around for a very, very long time. Their distribution layout is already there. So all they got to do is bring the products with their cigarettes and boom, boom, boom. They're going to have them in all those stores. The revised licensing agreement simplifies the payment structure resulting in cost savings of approximately $2.7 million for the company over the lifetime of the license agreement. Accordingly, the company expects that it's going to receive a reconciliation payment of approximately $135,000. Furthermore, the company projects approximately $300,000 in additional royalties to be earned through the end of 2023. 
Now, I like this deal and I don't know how big this is gonna get, but honestly, those other deals with like Circle K and 7-Eleven, those are huge orders. You're talking about companies that have over a thousand stores buying 10 and 20 of these for every single store. I was reading the financials. Some of these orders are six, 10, $12 million, and people are using these over and over and over again. I think this is gonna be exciting, folks. I think they're gonna explode. When all of these smokers finally have rights to use vaping products that they know are standardized and being looked at and are safe, they can find one that feels good to them, they're gonna stick with it just as long as they stuck with that cigarette. I know I stick with my vapes. Once I find one that tastes good and is cost efficient, right now I'm smoking for about $15, $14 a week, where a pack of cigarettes runs $8 a day. If you smoke a pack, which is what I was doing, so you're looking at $56 a week. I'm now down to $14. And I'm not getting the carcinogens, the tar, or the ash. I'm just getting my nicotine. So let's go take a look at this chart, folks. It is on a low. It is a buying opportunity right now. And if you see the potential in this company the way I do, I'm not talking about a bounce next week or next month. I'm talking about watching this thing grow as the government gets in there and starts tearing out all of those illegal players, leaving only the legal ones that have been kowtowing to the government. Can you see how excited I am? Let's go take a look at this chart. Well, let's chart this stock now on Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. So can you, and signing up, that's free as well. So we are looking at Cabo Brands Innovations. This is a three-year, one-week chart. Now, I don't think I can believe this bubble. It says it was at $43.80 back in February of 2021. Well, I know they have had a reverse split since then and every time there is a reverse split they adjust the charts to accommodate that split which really screws up the high bubbles in the past you really don't know what the deal is but the real reason i'm here isn't to show you the high bubble it's to show you that low bubble i'm on a three-year chart folks that is the low for three years let's come on down to six month four hours six months ago we were at a high of $1.13. We can trust that high. She has been coming downhill with some big jumps and bumps here and there, but she had a long drawn out fall from uh, June 23rd until August 10th when she hit her low of 40 cents. Now you can see she's had some good strong volume in this area and right now the volume is strong. You can see it got real light in this area and now it's picking up. We're getting some breakthroughs, the 200 right there, we got one poke, and she is still falling. I'm not saying she's looking good, I'm not trying to lead you into that. She is on a downtrend right now, there's no bow to doubt that, absolutely, positively. But we are looking for the bounce, because I think this is a great buy opportunity. She is at a three year low, maybe even more than that. I honestly don't know. And I see this company is growing down the road. And when she starts to grow, I don't think she's gonna be looking back. So right now she is bobbling around that 44 cent mark and she's going sideways with a downhill push. Our oscillators are pushing down. All of them look cool right now. Though believe it or not, our RSI is pushing up at this very moment. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she's been dropping steady and hard. Hit this exaggerated low. It was the wick. You know, really the low is somewhere here at 44 cents, not 40 cents. But that's on the books. She came back up. She got over a 200-day haul. Very much like your 200-day SMA, but it gives more credence to current prices. Pushed her way on top of that 50. That's what we need to do. We need to get on top of these big SMAs. She is bouncing off of the 200 hall, working her way on top of the 50, but she just can't seem to get it, and she's losing it right now. She's falling up underneath, but the very last peg, which is why the RSI was climbing, shows she's trying to get back up. Though I don't see any recovery right now. I just see a lot of bobbling as she's falling down the hill. Looking at our... Five-day, five-minute view. 
she is still falling slowly she's calmed down a little bit we had a bounce here a few days ago going from 44 cents up to 63 cents and then back down to that 200 day haul now in case you haven't noticed folks you probably didn't because most people don't have a 200 haul on their charts i use it because it comes in handy occasionally during a covid crisis the 50-day sma became the predominant sma all of the stocks were hovering right around that. Well, we have noticed that penny stocks are hovering around the 200-day haul, H-U-L-L. So if you want to add it to your charts, it's easy to do. So she broke that 200 haul, and she hit this low bubble here of 43 cents, consolidated, going sideways, which is normally a good sign if she starts to climb. She has broken through her 50 here. She's pushing towards the 200. It shows a little bit of optimism. I'm not going to say it's bright, but there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Our oscillators, we have a push up on our PPO, our percentage price oscillator. It is trying to get over top of the pink. You read your PPO the same way you read your MACD. These two tools are very much alike. PPO works with a percentage of the price, or the MACD uses the whole price. Personally, I like the PPO better. The MACD, she is bouncing right now, coming up to her signal line, and we got a nice big tall green bar there. And woo! Look at that RSI shoot from 43 up to 69.9. Folks, that is the brightest spot right there, was that aftermarket activity. I am telling you to put this on your watch list and watch for the bounce, folks. Watch for when it starts to come up, when it starts getting over top of that 200-day SMA. When you see signs of growth, you're going to want to play this. Now, the best way to do it, folks, we don't know where the stock's going to go over a long period of time. So you don't buy everything you want at one time. That's not smart. It's a great price right now. So let's say I want in. Go buy 25% which means you need to know how much you want. Just don't spend however much money you have and say, that's how much I'll get. No, figure out, do I want $1,000 worth? Do I want 1,000 shares worth? Plan what you want to do and then work that plan. Buy 25% right now. If you're only going to get 1,000 shares, get 250 of them right now. If it falls, you're not going to get upset. If you bought everything and it fell, you're losing money. But now it's a buying opportunity, so you can average down. You can buy another 25% at a better price. When she starts to climb and you know she's changed trends, she's gotten over 200 and she's starting to run, that's when you're going to buy more of your stock. You may pay more than your first buy. That's okay. You average down. It's all going to average out together. You just don't want to miss your boat. That's the way I'm going to play this, folks. I'm going to buy some now and watch the stock. If she takes a dip, I'll make another buy out of it. But if she breaks out, I'm in it. I like Cabo, folks. But do some more research. I did not cover everything. They've got a hot product. They have covered all the bases with the government, and they're scratching the itch of the public cries. They've got a product that I think I'm going to buy. And once I get it, I'll show it to you. I promise. <laughs> Remember, folks. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.